Uh, I may, might need to refresh. Are we are we live? Okay, we're live. Perfect. All right. Uh, I may, might need to refresh. Are we are we live? All right. Welcome everybody. Uh, today, Antoine will be streaming for you. I'll be doing voiceovers, answering questions in the chat, uh, and narrating some of the work that he is doing, uh, while also trying not to be a distraction while he works. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I won't be, my voice won't be too annoying for him. Um, so uh, let's, let's get started. Um, okay, hello everyone, and uh, enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah, so a Antoine will be mostly quiet during this. Um, you know, he's, he just wants to be able to concentrate on the work, and, and that's, uh, that always works. Yeah, it's uh, mostly because my English is very not confident, so I will oh, to dude. not speak that much. You sound you sound perfectly fine, man. But uh, but that's okay. I understand. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys could see a uh, a ceiling fan that Antoine did for us a couple weeks ago. Uh, this will be a, an object that you will be able to place into your player owned apartment or house up on the ceiling. In a, in a designated slot. So there there will be these like little holes cut out in the ceiling, and you can snap the ceiling fan or a different kind of light into that position anywhere there's a hole in the ceiling. So that's uh, very nice. You can see the uh, the wood grain as well as some of the, the roughness variation on the metallic. Yeah, thank you, Vanature. Uh, no rain here. Hopefully, hopefully it's all pretty clear weather for you up in Canada, Antoine. Yes, it's uh, a lot of sun. It's sunny. Good, good, very, very, very nice. Good. It's always a good day when it's shiny outside. So yeah, you can see here. This is a uh, a a coffee table, I suppose you could call it. Uh, <coughs> Very, uh, very nice uh, speculator uh, shine to it a little bit. It's more, it's more matte than it is shiny, but it, it is very good. Uh, I, I will just show another coffee table, and then uh, we will begin the texturing. All right, perfect. <laughs> now, feel free to show some of your other work as well, if you, if you. Uh, are are really interested in doing that, even even if it's not related to identity. Maybe you've worked on something for other projects in the past or at the same time that you're allowed to show anyway. <laughs> uh, um, okay. So, okay. Uh, so here's another... Uh, this is also a coffee table, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so there's a bit of an illusion here. It looks like it's probably waist-high, but it's actually kind of like knee-high. Uh, or maybe up to your shins, or above your shins, anyway. Yes, um, it's, it's exactly. <coughs> these uh, these are modern furniture, DK designer. The uh, a coffee table like this will be able to be placed as a decoration inside of your player apartment or house. You can place other objects on top of it too. Um, <laughs> and uh, you can see this is the uh, the uh, security anti theft device that Antoine has just finished modeling. I actually assigned another one of these to him. It's a little more uh, um, futuristic, modern looking that he'll be working on in the next few days. Um, <clears throat> but uh, he's going to take this asset that he just got finished working on. 3D modeling. Maybe it could. Is it possible for you to show off the wireframe from uh, oh, yes. from this program? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so people can get an idea of the edge flow with the, an asset like this. So you can see a lot of a lot of quads and triangles going on there. It's not too high polygon. You know, perfect to uh, great edge flow. Nice rounded corners. Very clean mesh. <coughs> uh, 
Yeah, very good, very good. Thank you for showing us that. You're welcome. So, uh, so Antoine will begin uh, texturing this now, and and uh, and uh, the, this this program is called Substance Painter, by the way. So he's going to begin texturing with Substance Painter. Alternatively, some 3D artist will will texture in Photoshop uh, using the the Quixel plugin, NDO and DDO. It does the exact same thing. Uh, this is a little more user friendly than that. Excuse me for the cough, by the way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you to all of those uh, that are just joining us. Uh, as you might have seen on Twitter or other social media, we will be texturing an asset today. In, uh, well, Antoine will be texturing an asset today in Substance Painter. You can kind of see that he's selecting different areas of the mesh. I'm assuming these are different material IDs that you're, or does it just automatically select that difference? Like, I'm not sure. Le yes, it's like uh, separated uh, elements or uh, okay. UV islands. Okay. Oh, per yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the the uh, so he he's referring to uh, UV islands. That's where the the different parts of the UV are separated from each other. Um, and uh, when when he's just selecting the different pieces, it it's it's really smart. So he's just kind of getting some base color down here at first, trying to block out how this will look. It's already looking like starting to come together too that quickly. I'll have to try to mute my microphone every time I'm going to cough. So free freebies. Uh, we do have some photo scanned materials in identity, but not everything is. <clears throat> I think uh, it's mostly like environment stuff, like rocks are photo scanned, boulders and rocks and mountain cliffs. <clears throat> But most of our assets are done the old-fashioned way. Well, a uh, new-fashioned way, I guess. Because PBR, or substance, is the new standard to texturing. <coughs> yes! So DK Designer, this metal detector will have a function. In fact, this specific metal detector you're going to see many times over in Identity, pretty much in every single store and business in Identity. You're going to see this exact same metal detector all over the place in the game. This is one of the, the, the few objects in the entire game that you're going to see a lot of. If you are paying attention when you walk through a doorway. 
it's it's actually an anti theft detector. I don't think it uh, in real life detects metal. Uh, it kind of detects like the tags like on 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 a uh, stolen uh, goods, so that people walking out of Walmart, for instance, uh, don't shoplift. <laughs> <clears throat> That's correct. It's like an RFID scanner. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're going to see a lot of this object. Uh, so it's kind of it's it's really exciting for me to have Antoine model it, or texturing this today because uh, uh, it's kind of like a piece of history and identity's <laughs> future. And we do have another one that Antoine will be modeling over the next couple of days. It's a little more futuristic looking, uh, not too futuristic looking. It's still viable in today's world, but a little more modern. Just so we can get some variation wherever it's necessary. Yeah, so this this software is called Substance Painter. Let me give it a link for you. Uh, like all 3D modeling uh, related software, it is pretty expensive for a license. <clears throat> Usually Substance Painter comes in a package with uh, bitmap to material and substance designer as well. So let me. Uh, there you go. There's a link to the substance painter if you want to check that out. Kind of getting some text in there. You see how like quick and easy it is to manipulate things in this program. It instantly add depth to some text using uh, like some normal adjustments. It looks like it's it's actually inlaid into the uh, uh, or even extruded uh, out of the the mesh. But it's an illusion. It's just a texture. It's not actual geometry. It's not generating geometry. It just creates the illusion that there's depth to it. And that's what's so great about, uh, well, normals, but Substance Painter. <clears throat> yeah, so why, while we can uh, technically support uh, or potentially support... Uh, a thousand players in a server. We don't necessarily want to support a thousand people in a server um, because the the map is only designed for so many people, and it can get overcrowded with too many people. You don't want to be looking for a nice quiet place to cook your meth from your mobile meth lab and find that there's already 50 other people in the same location or a hundred different cops all chasing you at once <laughs> or 800 people waiting for a taxi yeah that's another good point so Antoine's just checking different fonts at the moment to kind of figure out which one uh, uh, feels right uh, the the one thing, uh, just uh, in, in case I didn't tell you before, Antoine, uh, please be sure not to do any real, uh, real branding. It looks like you're <coughs> you're going to be using just the word checkpoint, which is which is perfect. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 All right, perfect. Yeah. <coughs> the 
There was actually a poll that we did on Twitter a while back ago. We asked people whether they would play as a criminal, a police officer, or a regular civilian. And uh, the the uh, results were actually pretty satisfying for us. Um, let me see if I can find that real quick. Because uh, that is the uh, kind of representative of exactly what we were hoping the ratio between criminals and police would actually be. So it's it's uh, hope we're hopeful that it will remain that way. Let me just I'm just scrolling down here our Twitter page see if I can find this poll. Looks like it might be lost to time, actually. Not seeing it. Oh, well. <clears throat> but uh, ideally, we would expect that there would be fewer police officers than criminals. And uh, the majority of players will probably be regular civilians. So fewer criminals than regular civilians and fewer police than criminals. And there will be artificial limitations on the server when, when uh, if there's too many cops lo uh, currently logged in and on duty on a server, uh, they, of course, will lock out the police force temporarily until their a slot is open. So you can log into the world. Uh, when you log in each day, you will not be uh, logged in as a police officer. You actually actually have to go to the police station. We might we might change that. Um, but you'll have to go to the police station and uh, sign in for duty again. And uh, if there are too many cops online at the time, you will be a little out of luck until a slot opens up. Maybe we could even do a queue. Uh, yes, we're still using Unreal Engine 4, good game, Steve. Um, <clears throat> we don't know which version uh, we will end up on, but currently, at the moment, we are still updating with each uh, stable branch. So we, we migrate all of our work to the next version every time another version comes out at this moment. It takes, it takes a little while to do, but... Uh, but we want to make sure that we have all the available tools uh, for uh, that we might need during the development of identity. <coughs> so they're uh, busy Belgian. There is an application process to join the police force. Uh, on official servers, it is automated. On private servers, it is either automated or the server owner can choose to manually control the system. Um, <clears throat> let qualified uh, rank of police officers uh, recruit people. Uh, but uh, on official servers, anyway, you will have to go through a qualification uh, thing, a little tutorial, basically in order to become a police officer. You might also require a certain amount of play time, maybe um, two or four hours before you can sign as a police. Uh, total, accumulative hours, not, not like every game session. People have done some really incredible work with Unreal Engine 4. Like, I, I'm really excited for this engine's future. Um, some of the, the photorealistic stuff that <coughs> that uh, Dubs is referring to is, is just incredible. And most of it's arc visual, visualization. Architecture visualization. But that 
doesn't mean it can't be used in the game, for instance. Epic Viper. I don't have an exact number of vehicles, but there will be a large variety of vehicles. Uh, there, there will be plenty of vehicles uh, in Identity's world because we really want the world to feel immersive. We want it to feel like there is some individuality uh, between players. You know, there, so there has to really be a variety of options for people to pick from, especially in a social environment like Identity's. Uh, people in a social game like Identity really have to be able to express themselves individually. So uh, it's really important to us that the clothing uh, customization system, the character customization system, uh, vehicle customization and whatnot all offer a great deal of variety to every player. We really want to cover every base. Uh, yesterday you saw Miroslav working on a trench coat the whole reason for that trench coat, even, is so that those that are interested in role playing as a, a, in a gothic theme, uh, you know, we really want to cover all social groups. So those players that really want to role play in that gothic theme can have, can be able to uh, really immerse themselves in that environment. And there is typically uh, what we call sub hubs for every social group too. A sub-hub is like a social gathering area on the map. And uh, what we expect these to be used for are players that roleplay or, or belong to a specific theme for their character can go and meet each other. Uh, say you are a, uh, a bum, you know. Uh, there will be a sub-hub perhaps under a bridge that you and all the other bums in Identity can go and meet each other and maybe organize your begging uh, operation, uh, <laughs> or or if you are a biker, you really like to dress up as like a, a crazy cool hog riding biker. You know, you could get your your leather uh, uh, straps on and and uh, uh, you know your leather cut, the jacket that all bikers wear. Uh, you could go to a biker bar and hang out together with other people that are interested in that same exact uh, character theme in that location. Or even, it also separates along criminality and legality lines too. Criminals also will have their own specific sub-hub locations that they can go to that non-criminals can't go to, uh, where criminals can hang out and, and uh, plan operations together, maybe... Uh, uh, get together and, and plan out a heist for a bank or the Federal Reserve or a prison escape, for instance. <clears throat> so it looks like I am missing a couple questions. Let me scroll up a little. Uh, killer Laughs 3D. Uh, will there be rankings within the police? Um, yes. So there will be rankings on both official servers and private private servers. Uh, they can be manually controlled on private servers. On official servers, it's more of an automated system. It's kind of like an experience game thing for on official servers where you just kind of where your rank kind of represents how active you are on the police force. But on, a, on, a, on private servers, they the ranking structure can have some real substance to it. You know, you can give different permissions to different ranks. <coughs> and, uh, and have a fully functional police force with leadership and sergeants. And the ranks will go up to uh, captain, of course. So captain being the highest rank, uh, lieutenant below that, and whatnot. <laughs> so, so Johnny Pixel, uh, regarding uh, furries, we, we have nothing against uh, people that are interested in cosplay and, and uh, furry costumes and stuff like that. But th that sort of thing is a little too exotic for identity. We don't want, for instance, everybody in the game to be running around in furry costumes in identity. Because uh, we feel that kind of thing is it breaks immersion. So, so no, no furry costumes, unfortunately. But uh, we definitely don't have anything against those people. You know, we, we, we respect th that interest. Um, 
But uh, there won't be any furry costumes in Identity. Nothing, nothing exotic that will break player immersion. It's got to feel like you're living in a real environment. <clears throat> because we know that uh, if we did that, everybody would be running around with furry suits all over the place, and we, we just don't want that. <laughs> uh, Tarek, we have 15 staff members at the moment. Uh, most of those people, like Antoine, are freelance artists, but like Antoine, they've also been working with us pretty much since the beginning. So we, we, we don't just kind of jump back and forth between freelance artists. We, we find an artist that we really like and we stick with them throughout the entire development process. And we're really glad that we found Antoine because he's a very talented artist. And uh, what's even better, maybe we could even convince you to work in the office later because you're up in Quebec there near the office. <laughs> hey, thank you. Yes, you. Yes, we have to talk to uh, John about that. Hopefully, hopefully we can convince you. Otherwise, oh well. You know, we, we can still we can continue working remotely if that doesn't interest you. But uh, uh, there will be pets in Identity Polsky Prouda. Uh, at first. The pets will only stay inside of your apartment. They will only ro roam around your apartment at launch. Uh, after launch, we will see about letting them out of the house. Uh, we want to see canine units for police. We want to see hunting dogs. And we also just want to see pets um, following their owners outside of the house. Maybe you just want to take your pet for a walk, for instance, or have it follow you around as you run around. <clears throat> run all over the world and uh, um, and yeah that's that's that that will come after launch uh, it will not be before launch but uh, before launch you'll at least see pets running around your apartment no exotic animals though I'm sorry if it is something small like a snake or a turtle It'll be confined to a uh, a cage or a tank. It won't be able to leave the cage or the tank. But uh, if it is like, but I, I'm talking about no tigers. You're not going to be able to own a tiger in Identity, unfortunately, or a lion or or a zebra. You know, you, you'll you'll only have the standard fare of animals. Maybe a bird, a snake, a, a cat, a uh, you know, no, no possums or skunks. <laughs> but uh, you might still see some of those things out in the world, too. A bear or a wolf, for instance, you'll, you'll potentially see out in the woods. And uh, uh, I do recommend staying away from them if you value your life. <laughs> Can you run over the pets? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, probably, admittedly. If, if, the, if the pet can leave the house, it can probably also be harmed, too, unfortunately. But uh, that, that's not to say that you're going to lose the pet forever if it does get harmed in that way. You just go back to your house and respawn it, whatever. You know, and they're not going to, we're not going to, like, uh, cause anybody to uh, have a meltdown. <laughs> uh, there will be a zoo in Identity Kane. Uh, so yes. So while while I'm mentioning those those exotic animals as non pets, you might not be able to have them as a pet. But there is a zoo in Identity that you'll be able to visit and potentially see some of those exotic animals sitting in the zoo. Uh, I, I'm really interested in seeing a gunfight occur over the uh, the zoo. You know, I want to I want to see like a battle over a zoo. <laughs> That'd be really interesting. 
yeah, we don't want to scar anybody for life with the the pet thing. So, so you'll you'll be able to retrieve your pet again if it gets run over in game or whatever, you know. <laughs> uh, thank you, good game, Steve. Uh, good game, Steve said uh, to you, Antoine. Props to your asset creator. It's looking good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you won't be able to have illegal dog fights, unfortunately. Yeah, we'll have all sorts of different pets. Uh, a German Shepherd police dog, sure. Uh, you know, there'd be other types of dogs that you could have for police vehicle. You know, a Golden Retriever, perhaps. Um, probably not a poodle for a police dog. Because we, we are trying to keep things immersive, you know? So there will be probably limitations on what kind of police dogs there are. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen a poodle police dog? I wonder if that exists. Yeah, no, no Chihuahua police dogs, unfortunately. Um, uh, yeah, so so while I'm talking about the police dog, let me just reiterate that that will all be considered after launch. We're not going to do that before the launch of the game. Uh, that's that's a little outside of our uh, uh, our our scope at the moment, but uh, we'll. We'll get into doing all the research required to get that to work after identity launches. In the meantime, those pets will be confined to your house or apartment interior. <coughs> Papa Apple uh, Bay, yes, it's, it's likely that you'll be able to own other types of fish or aquatic creatures and inside of fish tank. Probably nothing exotic, like a giant squid or anything, but a but other other aquatic species small enough to fit into a, a, a relatively small fish tank that can be placed in your living room or on a uh, on a bookshelf or something. <coughs> Dubs, uh, it's it's very unlikely that we'll have face over IP stuff like in Star Citizen. That I was really impressed with that system. Uh, maybe that's something that we can look into in the future. But uh, we don't have any sort of uh, licensing deal with uh, the people that created that that hardware, like the Star Citizen people have. They probably have a uh, a lot of money to make a deal like that, and we we don't have that in our budget. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we'll uh, we'll look into it. But uh, I can't promise that we'll have any face over IP thing. And, and basically, what that is is it's where you like a camera tracks the motion of your face, facial features, and translates that into the game. It was really impressive in the the Star Citizen GamesCon preview, but it probably will not make it into Identity. <coughs> So doc, Dr. Babymaker, the software being used currently is called Substance Painter. It is a texturing tool, uh, a substance texturing tool, or PBR texturing tool uh, for game assets. It's a lot like Photoshop in a way, but a little, little more uh, control over a specific 3D function. Thank you, Akea Real. Thank you very much for your support. Appreciate that. I know I've missed several questions. Let me see if I can scroll up and catch something that I've missed here. 
Uh, good game, Steve. Narcotics will give your character a debuff. Uh, well, actually, a buff. But if you overuse the narcotics, they will debuff you. Uh, you'll you could become addicted and be forced to go to a hospital to treat your addiction and identity if you take too many narcotics. So it is a it's a bit of a trade off. You you can. Uh, uh, you can gain some temporary positive effects from taking some of the narcotics, only temporarily, and uh, uh, we're, we're definitely not advocating the use of illegal narcotics. Uh, the, it, the system is more or less designed to kind of teach people of the, uh, the risks involved in uh, taking some of the narcotics. Um, some worse than others, obviously. Uh, the governor can, of course, legalize marijuana um, in identity. So, uh, so that might be a platform that some governors run on uh, when running for governor. Is they they will promise to legalize marijuana, for instance. So, if that happens, you can freely consume marijuana in identity. Uh, there will be a unique animation for that. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, uh, you might get arrested for using it if it's not illegal, if it's not legalized. Yeah, so, so VoIP in Identity actually runs through a back-end TeamSpeak client. It all, it all runs through... Uh, to, through TeamSpeak, a TeamSpeak server that the players are not able to see. You, you're not connecting to any channels manually. You're not downloading any client outside of the game. You are uh, you're downloading the, the internal files that are attached to the game, and when you sign into Identity, you are automatically placed into a TeamSpeak server. Um, and... Uh, will simply uh, be running in the background of your client. You won't even know it's there, honestly. So phishing is pretty cool in identity. Uh, thank you, Glacius, uh, TES, for the, the question. Um, so y you can fish right off the side of a dock or off the side of a beach into the water surrounding identity, or identity's world anyway. Um, but you can also get a fishing boat of various sizes and go out into the water and uh, fish from, from your fishing boat. It'll automatically collect into the fishing boat's in inventory. You take that back to shore, you sell it at the, uh, the marketplace uh, for selling fish, and you get some profit. It's pretty simple. Um, you can dive underwater. There will probably be physical fish li uh, swimming around underwater. Um, we haven't really decided yet how that mechanic is is going to be fleshed out. But uh, <coughs> there will be physical. F there will be fish underwater that you'll be able to see and probably catch manually. Uh, as well as automatically from the fishing boat. So if you just want to swim up to a fish while diving and grab it, you could do that. But uh, what's what's really cool about the swimming mechanic is that you'll also be able to uh, to dive for wreckage, you know, like treasure, underwater treasure from from shipwrecks, uh, not player shipwrecks. These are pre-placed uh, shipwrecks in the environment underwater. And uh, you'll be able to explore those shipwrecks and collect treasure, some some more rare than others. And if you, in specific cases, you might actually find a, a very rare piece of treasure that you could bring to the museum, get some money from the museum, and have that item displayed to the entire server in the museum and identity. So it'll be a really cool system. I appreciate your interest, uh, Lion King Gamer, in donating uh, to the stream. But uh, because we don't do this often enough, we don't want to 
um, offer a way to donate uh, yet. Uh, because uh, really, we'd, we'd we'd prefer it if you spent your money on 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 packages and identity uh, pledge rewards and items from the the shop rather than donating. Uh, Boring Sam prison and identity is pretty cool too. Um, it's kind of like playing a game within a game. When you get sent to prison, uh, depending on how long you're there for, you can request a trial. Um, if your tr your trial request gets approved, you'll be sent to the courtroom. Uh, all of the uh, the jurors, uh, jurors of your peers, other players, will be randomly selected from the world. They'll be given a certain amount of time to reach the courthouse. And uh, and become juror members. They get paid for becoming juror members, for being there. Uh, and you can choose to plead your case or have an attorney, a player attorney, uh, plead your case on your behalf. Perhaps you don't have a microphone. Perhaps you're not very confident in speaking. You could have somebody else represent you in court and plead your case. Uh, the judge is an AI. It's an NPC judge, but the jurors are players. There would be uh, probably 6 to 12 jurors, depending on how many respond. And they will decide your fate after you are given a certain amount of time to plead your case. Uh, if they're... If, what happens if they're in the middle of something? Uh, then uh, you, you simply won't get paid. Yeah, that's one less juror for the courtroom, I guess. That's how we handle it in Altus Life. And I think that's how it is in our design document, too. But uh, anyway, uh, if you don't go to court, and you're still in prison, you will just serve out your time. You could choose to leave prison whenever you want to after your time is served. Uh, there will be an exit for you to leave from. Uh, but you can choose to stay there and just hang out in the prison. There's a there's a common area for, for people to just hang out, chit-chat, or uh, get involved in some some activities that are, are inside the prison. Or you could choose to join a prison gang. You're not confined to one cell in prison. You are running around the entire prison interior uh, within the confinement area. Um, so, so as a prisoner, you could join a prison gang, find a shank or craft a shank perhaps, and attack other prison member, gang members, opposite uh, rival prison gang members anyway. And... Uh, and uh, capture territory inside the prison yard. Uh, there is a bit of a, a point system that I won't get into quite yet. We're still trying to, to flesh out how this is going to work. But uh, originally, uh, how this was planned is that uh, uh, there are three different prison gangs that you can join. There are three different prison factions. Uh, you, all your friends can join the same one if you want to. Uh, there's not player-created prison gangs, but rather three pre-made factions that you can join. And uh, those factions accumulate points with with each person that does uh, tasks for them. So uh, at once each of these, these prison uh, gangs accumulate enough points, they can actually initiate a prison break together. So whoever is in the prison at that time when the faction has finished accumulating points, you can all attempt a prison break. And the police that are qualified to do so will be able to respond to the prison break, and you'll have to have a, uh, um, a battle with the police. There is there are safe areas within the prison. So if you don't want to be involved in the the combat within the prison yard, there are areas that you can go where you are safe from from that.
Uh, good game, Steve. When you leave a specific area, uh, your client is not rendering those parts that you left from. If you leave, like the, say, say, the town square and you go out into the wilderness, you, your client is no longer rendering the parts of the town square. Like the, anything out of sight that your client isn't able to see isn't being rendered at all to your client. It's all very uh, optimized in that way. Yeah, there will be there will be different European servers as well as American. Uh, we'll probably even do an Australian server for those down under. <clears throat> so this this checkpoint that Antoine is working on right now, this is an item that is placed in the doorway. Usually there's two of these, so this is just one half of the uh, the checkpoint, and and this is this is placed in the doorway of businesses. You're gonna see this exact same checkpoint everywhere throughout the game. This is this this is kind of like a moment in Identity's history in a way because you're seeing the creation process for an asset that you're most definitely going to recognize when playing Identity. Uh, you're going to see this everywhere. This very same uh, security system that Antoine's working on now. And this is going to be placed in the doorway of every, system, every store. And what this will do, basically, is if, in, in most cases, if you are carrying firearms when you pass by these checkpoints, they will temporarily disable your firearm, uh, your, your weapons, so you won't be able to pull out a gun in certain locations, certain sub-hubs, safe zones, and uh, which are like interiors of buildings. They're not out in the world. You won't, there's no safe zones out in the world. Uh, but there are safe zones in specific interior locations. So... So when you pass by this, this will temporarily disable your, your weapon usage until you leave the building. And in some cases, uh, when you're inside of a, a, a store, you can attempt to shoplift items of low value. Depending on how, how valuable that item is, you'll be able, like a t-shirt perhaps, you'll be able to take that and leave the store without paying unless the... And there, there will be a chance of escaping... Unless the detector goes off, if the detector goes off, you're you're in some hot water there, <laughs> as the police come to get you. So, dead nerd, uh, how do we plan to take care of trolls? So, with with trolls and identity, um, we have a stress system that uh, helps mitigate some of the trolling in the game. Uh, so the, the stress system on official servers, this can, this can be disabled on private servers, by the way. This isn't required by servers. But uh, on official servers, depending on where you're at and what kind of action you're involved in, um, your character has a stress meter whether they're highly stressed or uh, very little stressed. And if your character, the more stressed you are, your character is, the more vulnerable to damage you are on official servers. So uh, if you're pointing a weapon at somebody or even having a weapon pointed at you, your stress meter is filling up. In certain, like if you're pointing a weapon, it fills up very quickly. If you have a weapon pointing at you, it fills up slowly over time. Um, uh, if you're driving erratically with your vehicle, your stress meter increases a great deal. If you're driving safely, it's, it stays low. Uh, if you're in a 
safer area, like a city, a populated place on the map, you your stress will be kept low. Uh, if you are in an illegal area, there are illegal areas in the map, the places where no no regular civilian should go, or cops even. Uh, your stress meter is fully elevated. So you uh, you are more vulnerable to damage based on how stressed your character is. And this is a system, like I said, this can be disabled on uh, on private servers. It's not gonna. It's not a uh, a perfect solution to everything, but uh, it will help mitigate the trolling on official servers. Anyway. Uh, Kilby, uh, if you are aiming at somebody from a distance, uh, it will it will not increase the uh, the stress meter of that person that you're aiming at because you're so far away. It'll it's also factored in by uh, like how close you are to your target too. So they uh, if you're at a distance and you're aiming at somebody, they don't have a clue that you're aiming at them, and they won't be gaining any stress. Uh, with a high stress meter, uh, you are st I mean with with your stress very low, you are still vulnerable to damage. It just will be easier to kill you with you when you have high stress. You can still be killed with low stress, but it'll just be easier to kill you with high stress. you're not you're not safe unless you're inside a, of a, a sub hub safe zone interior. In which case, you can't even use weapons in subhubs. Uh, BL Toaster, welcome, buddy. Uh, what you see being done here right now is a, a security system, I, an anti-theft uh, sensor, basically. You know those the sensors that you walk through? Uh, there's one on each side uh, inside a Walmart to kind of prevent you from shoplifting. That's what this is. Uh, Doctor Babymaker, no, there's not. There's not really a, like anything to help anybody get used to being stressed out all the time. And any, you're if you're a criminal, you're pretty much always in a a state of high stress, I guess, depending on what you're doing. Uh, dead nerd, what happens on death? So when you die in identity, you will have time for – you'll be given some time for of someone to come to revive you. Uh, you know, you kind of have like a life alert system to notify paramedics that you're dead so they can be alerted to your location. Uh, or another player, if they have the right equipment, can revive you on the spot. Um, uh, uh, like a friend that is with you. Um or you can choose to spawn back at your last bind location, or a city even. Uh, usually your bind location is your house, or a city if you chose to bind there when you arrived. But uh, but yeah, you, just, uh, you either get revived, or you have, or you, you just choose a location to spawn at. <laughs> you know, perhaps maybe a little unrealistic, but if you if you I guess if you burn to death, you can still be revived. Yeah, uh, it's you know while we we do go for a bit of realism in identity, we also have to keep in mind that it is a video game, so we we can't uh, 
so we don't want to like give preferential treatment to specific kinds of deaths or whatever. You know, we want to we want people to be able to have opportunity in this game. Always got to remember that it is a video game above everything else. So, like you know, you kind of see some of the criticism online about identity. You, you, sometimes you see people say uh, things like, oh, "Why would I want to play real life?" You know, I already I already do that. Well, it's not. It's it's a video game. Keep that in mind. It's it's not. This isn't real life. Uh, there's video game mechanics. You can do things in identity that you can't do in real life. You know, you can't you can't go rob a bank in real life without consequences. But you can go into identity and rob a bank and have some fun with it, right? It's not a training simulator for robbing a bank. It's just a. It just allows you to uh, do those things. Uh, when you die, you do drop anything in your inventory that you are carrying, other than clothing. Um, you will not lose your clothing when you die in an enemy. You always have that on you. Uh, that is that is part of what makes you you. We really want to preserve your identity, give players the option to uh, to really express themselves in identity. So we're not going to take anything that that really separates your individuality from other players. Uh, we really want you to express yourself. So so you're not going to lose your clothing. But if you do die, you will lose inventory items that are on your body uh, when you die. Of course. Uh, you will not lose it while you're in a downed state. You actually have to be dead, dead, like uh, like respawned back at your bind location um, to lose that stuff. If some a paramedic is able to get to you in time, that stuff stays on your in your inventory until you're dead. So uh, you will lose things like weapons or or maybe food that you're carrying in your inventory. So you really like uh, one thing we kind of really want to emphasize is that uh, weapons in identity we want to be fairly rare when outside of criminal activities. So uh, in order to do that, we we also want to give players the freedom to kind of choose how they play the game themselves. So so in order to kind of uh, ensure that weapons are rare. Uh, we we make it so that players can lose them when they die. You know, some weapons have durability. Uh, well, actually, all weapons have durability. But um, uh, so you overuse a specific type of weapon, uh, they will become damaged over time, become be in a state of disrepair, and no longer be able to be used. Um, you can lose them from dying, uh, and you uh, you can have them taken away from you by cops when you get arrested. And the the bigger the weapon is, if it's an assault rifle, it is more expensive. So uh, this weapons aren't something that can, can be crafted by other players, like other things, like furniture. Uh, weapons have to be obtained uh, through... Uh, s Various means. Uh, we're still working that out. It'll probably be a AI shop that'll sell you the weapons, but they're going to be pretty expensive. And so you're really going to want to save your AK-47 or your M416, uh, M4A1 rather, uh, for um, for the big jobs, the Federal Reserve robbery or the bank robbery. You're not going to be wanting to run around with a uh, an AK-47 on your back normally, because first it'll show up on your back. Like your your character will will have that strapped around his shoulder. People, other people could see that. And if somebody's hungry enough, they will murder you and take your weapon from you. Or a cop will see it. They'll arrest you, and you'll lose it. Uh, and uh, so you're really going to want to preserve the rare weapons for a specific. Uh, Occasions. Uh, Glacius TS. Will there be predators in the water that pose a threat to divers? Yes, there will be sharks. 
specifically. There will be sharks swimming around the water. You do want to be careful. They're not going to be like swarming the water. You know, you, you know, there are places that uh, are more heavily populated by sharks. But remember, risk versus reward. The more risk you take, the higher the reward. So you go diving in a, in a shark-infested area of the water. Uh, there might be something really valuable down there for you to find. Uh, Killer Laughs 3D, the economy will be realistic in identity. Uh, you could kind of imagine what you could purchase with $10,000 in real life. You could pro probably do the same thing in identity. Uh, you could probably buy a car, for instance. Uh, uh, some cars, uh, you know, depending on what kind of car it is, uh, you could probably purchase for $10,000 in, in identity, just like you could in real life. <laughs> there, there are no prostitutes in identity. Uh, Captain Manal Manolo, there are taxes in identity for various things. There's income tax. There is uh, like uh, housing tax. Uh, if you own a house from uh, a pledge reward, it is tax free. We don't. We, we the one thing we're very uh, uh, insistent on is that players will not lose something that they buy with real money. If you if you buy a house from a pledge, you're not going to lose that house or apartment rather. Sorry, you can only get apartments from from pledges. But uh, if you get if you have a, a pledge apartment, there it's impossible for you to lose that apartment. All right. Well, yeah, yeah. So uh, Belga has kind of wrapped up the stream here. Uh, you can see him in chat, Belga22. That is Antoine. Uh, and it looks like he is done uh, for this session. Um, uh, there might be some little cleanup. I don't know. I think, I think it might be finished, actually. It looks pretty good. So... Uh, if it's finished, it's good to go. Uh, we can we can uh, get that from him and toss it in the engine and have it ready for the game. That's the the texturing process for a 3D asset in Identity. Uh, for a prop specifically, it does have the, the, an object like this does have some additional functionality. Uh, obviously, it'll beep a bit. It'll it has some detection ability for for shoplifting. Or weapons. So we, we'll put this into the engine from this point. Uh, the programmers will take it and add that other functionality, either with Blueprint or C++ programming, uh, depending on you know some things classify for whatever. Uh, but it looks like we're done. We, we really appreciate you guys uh, coming out to the stream today. The, today was just a one-hour stream. Uh, not like last time, yesterday's stream, where we did two and a half hours. Really appreciate all your guys' questions. I'm glad that I was able to answer a lot of them. I apologize if I missed some of your questions. I know I did, um, but that is that is it. We'll be streaming again tomorrow. With uh, yeah, we'll be streaming again tomorrow with another artist. It will be uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Alexander Pavlenko, I apologize. Alexander Pavlenko, our concept artist, is streaming tomorrow. I don't have an exact time for that yet, but I'll be posting it on uh, Twitter. But we really appreciate you guys coming out to, uh, today. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We, we have a really great community. You guys are great. So supportive. Thank you. And uh, Antoine, are you there? Would you like to... Uh, yes, yes. Con Two uh, things. Thank you very much to everyone, everyone and, uh, and uh, hope, you, hope you, you liked it. And uh, maybe uh, we will do, we will do another uh, texturing uh, work like this another time, another week. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Antoine, for doing this for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. 
uh, people were finally able to kind of get an, an, an inside look of how things are done for 3D assets. Uh, and we're really proud that we were able to provide that for the community. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a good day. See ya.